Welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is episode number 25. I'm your host, Bo Bullock. I am joined with the one and only Mike Felch hello. once again. Hello, hello. And today we are going to be talking about phishing two-factor tokens with a tool that Mr. Mike Felch here wrote himself called Cred Sniper. And so we're going to kind of actually have a very short amount of slides today because there's, there's more demo to this one than anything. Sure. Because uh, we kind of wanted to walk through the entire setup process for Cred Sniper so that you know anyone who's never used it or might be like, you know, afraid to like, oh, you know, it might is there so much work to, to go in phishing, you know, two factor tokens? We're gonna walk through that and kind of show it's not that hard. It's it's pretty easy with this tool. Cool. All right, so to jump right in, um, kind of the purpose that Cred Sniper came to uh, fruition out of a need. Um, a lot of more orgs are starting to implement two factor and to use two factor tokens, whether they be the one time password like Google Authenticator or whether they be text messages or whether they be hardware uh, UTF keys. And so because of that, we needed a way to actually capture these two-factor tokens so that we could log into the accounts that we were capturing uh, from the employees on our customer engagements. And the other thing that we needed to do is we needed to rapidly deploy new cloned portals because a lot of the customers are starting to customize their login portal. So if they're using Gmail, they might not actually use a Gmail portal. They might have their own or, or OA um, for Office 365 and so you're starting to see a lot more like ADFS environments where they're customizing these portals and so we didn't really have a solution that was out there at the time and so that's how Cred Sniper basically um, was born and so um, with that I'll go ahead and just kind of jump in on installing it um, the first thing that to note is Cred Sniper is in under my repo so if you go to github slash you stay ready slash Cred Sniper you'll see it it's fairly straightforward um, and so I have a server here, brand new install on DigitalOcean, nothing unique about this. I haven't installed anything. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is just, I'm going to clone that repo. This is like a new Ubuntu image. Brand new Ubuntu image. I'm going to clone it into CredSniper. Um, the cool thing with this is it already comes pre-packaged with a Gmail module. So if you wanted to fish like two-factor modules, you could. Um, so as you're, you're going, there's a nice little install script. Now. Uh, depending on the context of the user, if they're logged in as root, it's going to be fine. If it's logged in as a regular user, it might ask drop into a pseudo prompt because they want you to kind of run some stuff. This will go through and it'll, it's going to ask a couple questions. But one of the first things that it's going to do is it's going to ask you what module you want to deploy to start with. And so obviously the one that comes with Cred Sniper right now is only Gmail. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's going to ask you where you want the final redirect to be. In our case, we're actually going to clone the box.com portal and fish two-factor tokens for box.com. So we're going to say we want to send the user to box.com after they um, give us their creds. It's going to say, do you want to enable SSL? Of course. And it's going to say, do you want to do two-factor phishing? Because you can use it without two-factor if you want as well. We're going to say yes. Now, we already set up a host name pointing it to this instance. It's called tsw.poppingboxes.org. And what this is going to go do is it's going to spin up um, a Let's Encrypt certificate and kind of tie it to the SSL so that uh, we have no problems. And then also we're going to say we want to list on 443. It's going to go through. And using those that we just added, it's going to request it. It's going to install all of the apt um, prerequisites that it needs. It's going to go through and set up Python 3, the pre, um, uh, prereqs for Python, and then also the Let's Encrypt to set it up for this. So for the domain you're setting up, that's the domain that the user is actually going to be logging into whenever they think that they're logging into the portal that you're trying to fish the two-factor from. That's correct. So in our case, we're just saying tsw.poppinboxes.org, mm -hmm. but normally you would use something a little bit more um, phishing-friendly based on what you're phishing. So mm -hmm. in box.com, you might try to find a, a box doppelganger type domain and then use that um, to spin it up for the SSL on that because you want to mm -hmm. make a convincing URL. Something like update stash box dot com or something or yes yeah. like updates dash box dot com yeah. if it wasn't available or something along those lines so as you see it's going through here um, it's unpacking all of the python 3 prerequisites um, this thing is built using flask so it has a templating engine um, called jinja 2 on the back end so it makes it really simple to create um, cloned pages right now it's a little manual because we haven't had a lot of development time into it um, but so setting the pages up for the unique pages that you're cloning it takes mm -hmm. a little bit of manual effort on that end, um, but for the most part, there's a really good example in here that you can just copy 
And, um, and that's actually what we're going to do today. So I already have, while this is building, um, I already have some of the pages set up. So the login page from box.com is already preset. And you'll notice here that there's this next URL. So whenever you go to that page, whenever this page renders, it's going to load the next page in the routes for Cred Sniper. So this is just the the source code from box.com. Like you just visited the page. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So sorry, I basically went to box.com. Mm -hmm. I just copied the HTML from there and put it into a text file, and then just added these little um, these templating parameters called like next URL. You'll see one here on the on the password page. We have one called username, and and then. Um, and we use the username right here as well because we have a, a element on the page that requires it. And then on the two-factor page, we, we actually embed the username and the password um, as hidden because we're posting this back to Cred Sniper. And so we'll, we'll walk through that here in a second. Um, this is creating another virtual environment here internally this, to note that after you run the install, because it's creating a virtual Python environment, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you use that whenever it's executing. Mm -hmm. Because if you stop Cred Sniper from running, make some changes, and then go run it again, it'll throw an error if you're not using the right Python um, version, which is in the, the virtual environment. And I'll step through how that looks in a second. So the only other thing that I think is going to happen here um, as we're waiting is it's going to prompt you for the Let's Encrypt email address that you want to use. Mm -hmm. I typically just throw something useless in there because mm -hmm. otherwise you'll get spammed with all of the expiration for your certificates. Um, and so, yeah, so that's pretty much what we're gonna be walking through here. So on the on the setup side, whenever you're creating those, those HTML pages, so you wouldn't grab the source and now you're, are you storing that in a certain directory that gets loaded as like a module? Yes, order? yeah, and I'll show you here in a second, but the way that it works is there's a modules directory that all these get loaded from. Okay. In that modules directory, there's also a, a Python file that at Cred Sniper actually calls whenever it's time to render the page. And then there's a templates directory, which you'll put the HTML files in. That'll give it a, let me see here, test.tester.com. Do you want to share it? We agree. Do you want to share it? No. Now it's going to run. Hopefully, if everything went smoothly, tsw.popinboxes.org, Cred Sniper, it's launching, successful installation, and now it's live. And so you see here, um, the module that we're running is Gmail, the port's 443, it's using SSL, two-factor is enabled. There is a built-in API in case you want to um, leverage the credentials with another application. Um, there's the API token, um, the final destination where it's going to send you to, and uh, the URL. So here what we'll see, we should see, is just the Gmail phishing page. There you go. And so this because we're using the Gmail module. And um, to just step through here, we could add whatever email that we want here. I'm gonna just go ahead and use mine um, because the next page that this Gmail module does is it actually loads the image for my account right here because I passed it my email already. And you'll notice some pages have a username and a password on one page and then a two-factor page. Mm -hmm. Gmail has a username and then a password page and then a two-factor page. And the same thing with Box. So you'll see whenever we create these real quick, how we actually have to have three different templates mm. because we have to send that victim to through the process. Gotcha. So in this case, I'm just gonna say uh, spring 2018 because that's like the strongest password ever. It's gonna ask me for the two-factor token here. Now, oh, actually just redirected. Um, so in this case, um, I'm not sure why that, oh, I know why it happened because I have something with that account and I shouldn't have done. Um, so it's actually triggering it on the back end. But anyway, that's the process. So it, it sends you to where the destination is. And that's what, really what we're going to mimic here. Um, and so you see now that I landed on box.com, I mm -hmm. um, shouldn't have used my account. But the reason why that happened is because what happens on the back end is Gmail gets logged into from Cred Sniper. So mm -hmm. when you put the username and the password in, it logs in to trigger the text message to the phone, mm -hmm. and I put a fake password in, right, so, so it wasn't able to log exactly. in. It said, hey, I don't know what's going on here. This Wait, is the you wrong. mean Spring 2018 is not really your password? It's not my password. Oh, okay. um, had I put my regular password in, it would have sent a text message to my phone, gotcha. and then I would have put that in. Um, and so we'll see what that looks like on box.com instead. 
So as you see here, this was all the back end. Um, first there's to note, so when there's a, a username and password that gets sent, we cache that because if they don't give us their two-factor, we still want to capture mm -hmm. the login and password. For sure, for sure. So that's stored in the cache file. It's .cache. Um, and you'll see the Gmail module, the email address, and the password. And then there's also another file here called sniped. Now, obviously, there was not a two-factor token that was captured in this example. That would normally be captured in .sniped. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but with that being said, you'll see this modules directory. Um, so to go ahead and move into the modules, you'll see the Gmails there, and there's an example one here. So what we're gonna do real quickly is we're just going to make a new directory called box. We're gonna CD into box, and then because we don't have anything in here, we're just gonna copy recursively the example into here. Um, this will give us the example.py, which we're gonna rename. So we're gonna say example.py needs to be box.py. Um, and I'm actually going to create a new one anyway. And then in the templates directory, you'll see that there's a login, a two-factor, and um, we're actually going to need another one. So let's just go ahead and in the templates directory, let's just remove them um, from here for now because we're going to create new ones. And so in the main page, we're going to see this box.py. Um, I already have that as well. So let's go ahead and remove the box.py um, from here because I already have some pre-built for us for the demo. And, um, and so it's really pretty straightforward. You have your routes. So anything that's accessing the forward slash is gonna call this main function, which is right here. Anything that calls slash get pass is gonna render this function right here. And you'll see the next URL is being set. So once I get, um, once I get rendered in the forward slash, the next URL I wanna send that user to is the slash get pass. Gotcha. On the get pass, the next one I wanna send them to um, is the two-factor and then on the two-factor I want to send them to the redirect which sends them to the, the main one so I'm just going to copy all of this here and um, hopefully my Vim doesn't throw anything up here all right good so I threw it in there and so now Chris sniper is going to call this function so the first thing that I need to do is because of our routes here we have to create a login.html a password.html and a two-factor.html and I have all of those right here and so this would be essentially the source code that you copied from earlier from the site. Yeah. So, so you went to the login page, copied the source code from the main login page, entered a username, went to the password page, yep. copied the source from the password page, created a password.html, same thing for two-factor, right. just created all these files, but you added in the routes so that you get the output from, yes, because, from what people are entering. Right. Because I don't want I don't want them to post actually to box. Right. So what we do here is if you'll see right here on this, on this action, this is the form post. So we're using the Jinja2 templating language to replace next underscore URL with our function internally mm -hmm. within CredSniper. And we do that on all of the pages. Like on the password page, you'll see there's another post right here, and the action is next URL, which we know actually sends it to our other page, which is our 2FA. And um, and so yeah, so we have our login there. So there's a little bit of manual effort to go and, and edit. So to create your own template. Yeah, and, and the idea here is we could do what some of the other awesome tools out there do that clone like the regular portals. Mm -hmm. um, like we could try to automate it, but the nuances with making sure our variables for like two-factor tokens are the same or mm -hmm. sometimes username is user underscore name or you name or email mm -hmm. and or user. And so we have to make sure that we know what those are in cred sniper in order to capture them correctly. Um, so there's probably some ways to do it. We just really haven't... Um, haven't had a lot of time to invest in the development side of that. And so password's done. So on template, we actually are calling this one two factor underscore h or two factor dot html. Alright. So hopefully we are good to go. Now to note, one thing that we should focus on also is remember, right now we're not running in that virtual environment. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is source that. This will drop us into that Python virtual environment. So if we do source bin slash activate, it'll drop us in there. And so now we could actually just call cred sniper. Um, and you'll see here, it's got the, arg um, the arguments that you could pass in. So it's, from here, it's pretty straightforward. Now we're gonna call module box, because we just created it. 
We're going to enable two-factor. We're going to set the port to 443. We're going to enable SSL, obviously. We are going to uh, pass in the final destination to be box.com. And then the host name that we're passing in is tsw.poppingboxes.org. And this should run our new cloned page. So now it's running. Um, it's listening on 443. So now if we drop over here to the browser and come back to uh, tsw.poppingboxes, it should be the box page. There it is. And so this is a, a cloned box page. As you can see right up here, we're actually on our page. So the cool thing with Box is similar to Google. Whenever you put your email address in, it actually sends you to the password page. Mm -hmm. But the fun thing that I like about this is it actually renders whatever you put here on the password page to make it look more personal. Mm -hmm. So I could put anything I want here, um, Mike at tester.com. When we click next, it's going to load the password page and it renders signing in as Mike at tester.com. Put your password in. And then it's going to prompt us, oh, we, wait a second, we got a new device here. What's the two-step verification code that you would actually get? Now, obviously, in this case, it's probably looking for like a Google Authenticator code. Mm -hmm. um, so we could put whatever code we want in here, 121212. We click Submit. It sends us on to box.com. And on the back side here, we could kill the web server. And we could see in Sniped. There's this unique ID, which no. that's, don't worry about that. We see the we password, see we see the two-factor token. This is a two-factor type, but I didn't put one in the template. The IP address that they came from, mm -hmm. and another really important fact is we use the IP address to geolocate the, the city and state and the zip because places like Gmail will sometimes prompt you, hey, this is an unusual device. Where was the last place that you logged into? Mm -hmm. And you have to literally type the city in. And so we GOIP that to provide that right off the bat um, for you so you don't have that to worry about. And so from here, now we um, have, um, sometimes we have a short window of, to log into the realbox.com mm -hmm. site because that two-factor token is going to expire. Um, so usually you have you know a minute or so to log in, so you got to make sure you move quick. That's also the reason why we created the API. Uh, so quick question. Whenever you're, you're looking at phishing for two-factor, do you do you fish without using the two-factor portion prior to enabling the two-factor so you kind of understand whether or not they even have that enabled? Yeah, great question. So a lot of times that's what we'll do. We'll um, It's a trial process. So we'll fish a, a subset of victims first so we don't burn all of our entire mm -hmm. list or get red flags. Once we do that, we, we'll, we'll have it ready to go. I'll try to have a, a two-factor page ready to go mm -hmm. regardless at least even if it's a, a simulated one that I just have to go back and make some minor edits to. Because a lot of times we don't know if it's enabled or if it is enabled, we don't know, are they specifically for Duo? Or are they using um, Google Authenticator? Are they using UTF devices? Right. Uh, because uh, we have to know whether we need to try to downgrade it or whatever we have to do in order to get them to trick um, into uh, putting their tokens in, so. Awesome. Cool. And so um, so with that, that's Cred Sniper. Um, Mitigation. So this is a big thing that we uh, we always push because a lot of customers were like, well, what do we do about this? We can't really solve because fundamentally it's just like a password. Mm -hmm. um, so teach users healthy behavior when they're when they're clicking links and when they're putting their credentials into a portal. If it's a portal that they're not used to, make that a, make that a behavior um, training and not like don't click a link if it has this um, in the subject right. or something. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. yeah, that was an awesome episode, and thanks for putting that together. And guys, if you want to go grab Cred Sniper, it's on GitHub. Um, make sure you follow us on Twitter. We're DAFTAC, and you stay ready, and we'll see you next week. Cool.